hello, Falcha. Welcome to the reading of the Tombow Kulnia with myself, Laura O'Brien. And we are going to screen share here so that you can see the, uh, the sorry, blank. The version that we're working with is the Joseph Dunn translation from 1914, and this is Recension 2, okay? And this is part three, so we are on the rising out of the men of Connacht at Crochany. Now, links to all of this, to a Tombow Kulnia explainer, to blog posts, to all of that stuff are down below. Make sure that you join the mailing list for your regular roundup posts of the episodes that we've done. And the mailing list is at lauraobrien.ie. And we are doing this for accessibility and community service and a pronunciation guide. And because I love the story of the taunt and I think that it should be way more widely accessible. And it can be a little bit daunting when you are reading it on your own and you have to go through all of it. So I thought it might be fun to do it together. So comment below if you're enjoying this reading of the taunt and uh, let me know because it will, you know, encourage me to keep going. Okay. So the rising out of the men of Connacht at Crochany. A mighty host was now assembled by the men of Connacht, that is by Alil and Maeve, and they sent word to the other three provinces, three other provinces, and messengers were dispatched from Maeve to the main that they should gather in Crochan, and the seven main with their seven divisions to wit, this is her sons by the way, main mother-like, main father like i'm wondering am i reading that right because i always said main but i'm seeing a, a an accent I'm wondering should it be i i don't know because that doesn't look like a father um it's going the wrong way for a father but i don't know is that just um a typo or what the hell i'm gonna go with main okay um because the accent is unclear so anyway main mother like main father like main all comprehending, twas he that possessed the form of his mother and of his father and the dignity of them both. Main mildly submissive, and main greatly submissive, main boastful, and main the dumb. Other messengers were dispatched by Alil to the sons of Maga, to wit, to Ketch, the first son of Magar Anluan, the brilliant light, son of Maga and Machorb, chariot child, son of Maga, and Bashkel, the lunatic, son of Maga, and Ain, the bird, son of Maga, Doche, son of Maga, and Scandal, insult, son of Maga. <coughs> Interesting names. These came, and this was their muster, 300 armed men. Other messengers were dispatched from them to Cormac Conlongus, the exile, son of Concor and to Fergus MacRoy, and they also came, 30 hundred their number. Now Cormac had three companies which came to Crocon. Before all, the first company, a covering of close shorn black hair upon them, green mantles and many coloured cloaks wound about them, therein silvern brooches, tunics of thread of gold next to their skin, reaching down to their knees with interweaving of red gold. Bright-handled swords they bore, with guards of silver. Long shields they bore, and there was a broad grey spearhead on a slender shaft in the hand of each man. Is that Cormac yonder, all and everyone asked? Not he, indeed, Maeve made answer. The second troop. Newly shorn hair they wore, and manes on the back of their heads. Fair, comely indeed. Dark blue cloaks they all had about them. Next to their skin, gleaming white tunics with red ornamentation, reaching down to their calves. Swords they had with round hilts of gold and silvern fist guards, and shining shields upon them, and five pronged spears in their hands. Is yonder man Cormac? all the people asked. Nay, verily, that is not he, Maeve made answer. Then came the last troop. Hair cut broad they wore fair yellow, deep golden, loose flowing back hair down to their shoulders upon them. 
purple cloaks, fairly bedizened about them. If anybody knows what bedizened means, put it in the comments below. Golden embellished brooches over their breasts, and they had curved shields with sharp chiseled, chiseled edges around them and spears as long as the pillars of a king's house in the hand of each man. Fine, long silken tunics with hoods they wore to the very instep. Together they raised their feet and together they set them down again. Is that Cormac yonder? asked all. Aye, it is he this time, Maeve made answer. Thus the four provinces of Erin gathered in Cruachany. They pitched their camp and quarters at night, so that a thick cloud of smoke and fire rose between the four fords of E, which are Ah Moga, Ah Berkna, Ah Schlissen, and Ah Coltna. And they tarried for the full space of a fortnight in Cruachan, the hostel of Connacht, in wassail and drink and every disport, to the end that their march and muster might be easier. And their poets and druids would not let them depart from thence till the end of a fortnight while awaiting good omen. And then it was that Maeve bade her charioteer to harness her horses for her, that she might go to address herself to her druid, to seek for light and for augury from him. That's the end of the rising out of the men of Connacht at Crochan E. And the next one is the foretelling. So that's an interesting one. That's where Fadelm shows up, the, uh, the prophetess. So definitely come back for that one. But um, this is just the gathering. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss a video, okay? So it's longer full and I will see you in the next video.